you do when you receive a 4080 Super that you never heard about, but want a water cool? Well, first, you look around on the internet what kind of water blocks support this particular card. But what if you don't find any compatibility lists that feature this card that you're after? Well, then you ask a couple of water cooling companies, right? But what if even they don't know? Well, then you take it apart. This is a manly GeForce 4080 Super, and to be honest, I haven't heard about this brand before until a friend of mine asked me to build him a fairly high-end PC, and the company that we bought parts from recommended it. I mean, when it comes to AIBs or add-in board partners, there's like five-ish variants of the PCB design that they all use. Add-in board partners, in case you don't know, are companies that buy GPUs from either Nvidia or AMD, or I guess Intel now as well, then make their own PCBs, which then they put these GPUs on. Now, because margins on these GPUs are so thin, many smaller companies can't afford not to join forces and make a bigger order together. Because in electronics, or anywhere else for that matter, the bigger the order, the better the price that you can negotiate. And this particular card has exactly the same PCB as a couple of other cards manufactured by a company called Zotac. And you know how I know that? Because I reached out to Alphacool, one of the industry leading manufacturers of PC water cooling gear here in Europe. In an email, I described what kind of card I have and they had no idea whether any of their water blocks would be compatible with it. So what they advised me was to take it apart. Uh, take a couple of pictures of the PCB and send them over. So I did just that, but also decided I'm gonna do a little investigation of my own while waiting for the response. And well, not even an hour into my research and I already found the perfect match on a website called Tech Power Up. It's a benchmarking slash news slash review site and they pretty much went through all the trouble of taking every possible GeForce 4080 Super apart and taking perfect photos for me to compare mine with. And when clicking through the pages, I stumbled upon this Zotac 4080 Super Amp Extreme Aero that has a PCB which is almost identical to the one I have. If you compare my photo with the one I found on the Tech Power Up, then you can see that the differences are only in some connectors on the back, and mine also has a button missing next to the power connector. I think in Zotac's case, this button switches between the silent and the performance BIOS, but as I don't have that card, I can't be quite sure. So, with this knowledge in mind, I went ahead and sent an email to Mark at Alphacool and he agreed that the water block that's most likely going to fit on my card was the one that fits a couple of other Zotac cards, uh, such as the Trinity and the Trinity OC. Well, in this video, we're going to put that theory to the test. At this point, I need to thank Alphacool because they sent not only this water block, but a full water cooling kit for this build, completely free of charge. I don't think they need any kind of special introduction, so I'll just leave a link to their website down in the description below so that you can check them out on your own. Additionally, I also want to thank Ani, who are specialists not just in PC components, but also other IT solutions such as cybernetic security and data recovery, and they provided the PC parts for this build, this GPU included, also completely for free. Now, interestingly enough, this card is surprisingly easy to take apart. All I have to do is unscrew these six screws that hold the cooler part of the card in the correct position, then these four screws that tighten the heatsink against the GPU, and finally, the four screws that connect the shroud to the bracket at the back of the card. And before we take it apart, let's also unplug these fan cables so we don't have to worry about them in the next step. And here's where it gets a little bit, well, not risky, but scary. If you're doing it for the first time, that is. Uh, because there are thermal pads between the onboard RAM and the heatsink and the power phases in the heatsink, and these thermal pads are a bit sticky, uh, the whole motion of taking the two pieces apart 
requires a little bit of force. And sometimes the amount of force that's necessary can get a little bit uncomfortable. So don't take this video as a tutorial, but if you do and your card isn't exactly the same as mine, then either find some other videos that show you how it's done correctly or triple check the manual for the water block as they do contain step-by-step uh, -step instructions on how to disassemble the card that they were made for. There you go. As you can see, some of the thermal pads stayed on the PCB while others went off with the heatsink. Well, it doesn't really matter because I will take them all off anyway and replace them with the ones that were provided with the water block. Generally, I think we'd be fine with the stock ones as well, but why risk it when we can stick to the manual and do as the manufacturer suggests? And since we're talking about the manual, whenever in doubt, check it out. I've done this plenty of times, yet in higher end gear like this, always refer back to make sure I'm on the right track. That rhymes. In my case, the manual says I should also completely remove the stock bracket and replace it with their provided one, which I actually like a lot, simply because it takes one slot less to mount the card. Now, in my case, both figuratively and literally, that won't be a problem because the motherboard doesn't have a PCIe slot this close, but still, for anyone that does, I imagine it's a welcome addition. Now, before we mount the water block onto the PCB, we also need to clean the old thermal paste and apply a new one. The block did come with its own plastic syringe containing enough paste for a couple of applications, but I prefer using my own Thermal Grizzly Cryonaut Extreme because of its superior thermal conductivity. This paste does have a drawback though. It's not as structurally stable as some of the other ones, so you can't just set it and forget it. But that's not an issue because water loops require yearly maintenance in which you have to take it apart, inspect the water blocks for any gunk or debris, and while at it, also reply or reapply the thermal paste. Do I do that every year? No, but I do it every second year and that's still good enough. Okay, paste is now applied and pay attention how I took great care to cover the whole GPU and don't judge me for artistic style, please. Well, there's a reason for that. You see, unlike the CPU, which comes with its own heat spreader, the GPU, once you uh, remove the paste, is pretty much naked, just the raw silicon. So if you don't cover every last square millimeter, chances are that the GPU will either overheat or some parts won't perform at their 100%. Either way, not an outcome we want, so I always prefer to put a little more paste than necessary and let the mounting pressure squeeze the extra out of the way. With our thermal pads applied to the block and our paste on the GPU, we can now screw the two together. Much like with the CPU, I prefer to screw the four included GPU screws in a star pattern and what's even more important, screw each of them just a small amount, like 90 degrees, then continue on to the next one. We do this because, as I said, you're pretty much squeezing the metallic water block against a silicon GPU with just a tiny amount of paste in between, so too much of an uneven pressure can break the GPU and, well, ruin your day. I guess you could say that the hardest part is now behind me, so all that we're left with is applying the thermal pads on the back side of the PCB. Unlike some other water cooling companies, Alphacool luckily includes pretty solid backplates with their water blocks and they're not just for decoration. You see, thermal pads on the back of the PCB actually help removing the heat away from the hot components quite significantly. And why is this important? Well, because GPUs are very sensitive to heat, so the cooler you can get them, the better they perform. This particular water block also comes with an LED strip, but I will likely not use it because this GPU will actually end up in a rack mount case. And rack mount cases usually don't come with glass panels. Well, at least mine didn't. But we'll talk more about that in the next video in which we'll connect the GPU we just built with this monstrosity. Tomasz from Slovenia, signing out.